Hey guys, um, now we're going to talk about pausing and restarting commands and running commands in the background. And to do that, we're going to use a few of my favorite uh, commands. So one of the commands we're going to use is top. So I'm going to run top right now. And you can see on the Linux machine, here's all the stuff that's running. On you know, Okay, here's all the great stuff that's running. And we're going to use PS as well. What is PS? PS shows the processes that I'm running. Why would I need to do that? Because I'm going to need to show you some of the processes that I'm running. We're also going to need, because I get, because if we're running things in the background, there's no other way to see them. We're also going to need to learn another command, which is called sleep. Sleep is the command that does this. Sleep two, one, two. There. It slept for two seconds and then woke up. That's it. So if I sleep a billion, well, that's bad. It's never, ever, ever going to wake up. Um, I'm not sure that you know how to do this. And so the very first thing I'm going to teach is control C again on the Mac. It's open Apple C, but control C there. I killed it. That's it. Uh, you can kill any process with control C. It's really nice. Control C is the process killer. Um, however, there's something that's way more important, which is the ability to put processes in the background and keep them running there and bring them to the foreground. So let's pretend I have one process that I wanted to sleep. But now I want to run other things, but I don't want to kill this process. Well, there's a few ways I can deal with that. Because I've already started it running, actually, I'm going to kill it off for now. A way to run a process in the background is to do the following. Ampersand. There. That process is now running in the background. So if I hit PS, boom, there it is. There is that process. It has a process ID of 5330. And it's running. Um, great. If I wanted to bring that process to the foreground, which means don't run it in the background, there's a way of doing that. But the first thing I want to teach you is here's how to kill a process. If I want to kill that process, I go kill. Um, I'm just going to teach you. You don't have to always do this, but I always do this. Dash 9. Kill sometimes doesn't kill processes. Kill dash nine almost always kills processes. 5330, that's the process ID. Boom. And it doesn't, so I'm going to hit enter again. There. And it says, hey, it killed it. And if I look in my direct processes, there. Great. So kill kills off processes. Now, what if I want, what if I start running this process and I didn't put it in the background to begin with? i just running it. There we go. Hey, I'm accidentally running the process, but it's not in the background. And I would I want to do things at the command line, but I can't. Wow, well, what do I do? Well, the answer is simple. So I could just kill it off and then do things at the command line, but that's not what I want to do. I hit control Z. That process is now stopped. And if I hit PS, you will see that it's there. But if I hit an expanded version of PS, you will see that the process is not actually acting at all. The process is not running. If I hit FG for foreground, it will bring that process back to the, to the foreground. Now it's running again in the terminal. Great. Okay, cool. I'm going to hit Control Z again. If I instead hit BG for background, it's as if I had put an ampersand after it, and now it starts running again in the background. So it basically, if you hit Control Z, it will interrupt a process. It's not dead. You have not canceled it. It's interrupted, and you have to make sure that it's not like it's. It may still be running. So if I look at my processes in the background, there now it's running again in the background, and this process is just running. It's going. It, it's performing what it's supposed to be performing. So if I wanted to do another sleep command in the background, I can just do that. I'm going to do that and put that in the background as well, and then hit my processes, and there's my commands running in the background. Cool. And now if, it, if I hit foreground, which one comes to the foreground? It's I think it's the last one I moved to the background, so it's going to be the shorter one. Yeah. So if I kill that off, and then I hit foreground again, now that one comes up to the foreground. Great. So now you know how to use ampersand to run things in the background. And that's great. And you know how to use control Z, which is super useful. Why is control Z useful? Well, if I do IPython... There, here's IPython. Great, I'm running IPython. Okay, 
Uh, and I'm doing things, and I really need to get to the shell, but I don't want to do it from within IPython. Control Z. Now I'm at the shell. I can do shell things. And then, uh, and then I want to go back into IPython foreground. Oh, and I'm back. Right there. Cool. Great. You can just do that. You can interrupt processes and go back to them. This is not a foolproof system. It is totally not foolproof. You you can definitely be a bigger fool than this system and and beat it. Um, there there are times in which you you will backgroundify a process and go back into the foreground and you won't be able to type in that process anymore for whatever reason because some processes don't behave very well. Um, it, like Python used to be like that. I think MATLAB is like that. I can't remember if it's Mat. So there's some programming language that's like that. I can't remember which one. But basically, there's one of them that if you go into the background and then bring it to the foreground, if you bring it, you know, if you control Z and then bring it back, it's done. You lost it, unfortunately. IPython doesn't work that way. IPython actually works exactly the way you'd want it to, which is great. So I love that. Um, what else can we learn with this? Well, there's another thing that we can learn which is screen. What is screen? I'm going to control D out of there. Good. Okay, good. What is screen? So what's running right now? Nothing's running. Okay. So the problem with an ampersand, and I'm not going to do it right now, is if I'm running some process in the background, let's say I'm running, I'm going to go here, I'm running this process in the background, and then I log out. I either type exit, I'm not going to hit enter, or I type log out, or I hit control D. I have left the terminal, and that process will end. That process will be done. It's over. Goodbye process. So what do I do to allow things to run while I'm not logged in? And the answer is, and I, I'm, by the way, it, it, it may still be running here because I closing this terminal wouldn't log me out of the computer. But in any case, but if I'm on like some remote system and I log out of the system, but I was running something in the background, it's done. It just stops. How do you run something in the background with you not logged into the system? You use a command called screen. So first I'm going to kill that. What is screen? Well, screen is simple. I'm going to do this. Ooga booga. There's here. You remember ooga booga is on the, on the screen. I'm going to type screen. Enter. Okay, great. Um, it says hit space or return to end. Okay, that's great. I'm going to just hit space and uh, there. Where did my screen go? Did I don't I don't where did, where's the I don't what's going on? Where's the Uga Booga? I don't know. Where are the things? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, this is an entirely new screen that is running in an entirely different system. You can see that my original bash shell is still running and this new bash shell is also running. Okay. How do I get out of this? How do I go back to my original bash shell? Well, that's pretty simple. You uh, control A and hit D. And look, here's Ooga Booga. Here it's back. Notice how this thing says detached. Okay, great. What does that mean? If I look in processes, it's still running. That new screen is, even without screen running, that bash shell, that process is detached, but it's running, which means that I can go back to it. There's a bunch of ways of going back to it. An easy way is screen-r to recall what you were in. Boom, now I'm back in that one. Cool. And I can detach it again and go screen-r and pop back into it, that's cool. Uh, if I want to run a second screen for whatever reason, I can. I can literally create a new one, control A, C. There, now I have a new, this one is new. Okay, cool. I'm going to detach that. And I'm going to go PS. And you can see now there's two bash processes running. If I hit screen-r, I will go back to one of them. If I hit... Basically, I can go... So if I hit screen, and I hit control A N, That doesn't work. It says no other window. Um, uh... I have to, I'm going to, I'm going to get out of this. So I'm going to control A, C. So I'm out of that there. So I created a new shell. So this is a new shell. So now you see all these things I have running. I'm going to hit control. Okay. Uh, new one here. Good. Control A next. Control A next. 
Control A next. Control A next. There's nothing there. Hey, what's going on? Okay, that's great. I'm going to close this. I'm literally going to hit exit. I usually hit Control D, but just for the sake of argument, I've exited that. And I'm exiting out of this. Wait, where am I? What is this? What's going on? Control A next. Control A previous. There's no other window. Okay, great. Quit out of that. Quit. Screen is terminating. But I still have a bash shell running, which means that there's another screen instance that's running. So I'm going to screen and I'm going to recall that one. And there we go. That one's new. Control A previous. Control A next. I'm going to make a few of these. There, I just made. So this one is number five. Control A previous, four. Control A previous, three. Control A previous. Control A previous. Good. So I'm going to cycle through them. Next, 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 next. These are all, and I can detach them. They're, they're all detached. They're all running in the background. So if I recall those guys, I can cycle between them and do anything I want. They're all running. I can just continuously cycle through my screens. And how do I kill them? Well, it's easy to kill them. You can either control a K. Really kill this window? Yes. Well, that was stupid. Why? I mean, you can just log out of these things, too. You can just literally log out. You can just logging out, logging out, logging out, logging out, no, logging, logging out. There, good. I logged out of everything. I completely logged out of all of them. And now, boom, there's one bash shell left. Because the three was there. So I'm logging out of it. There, there's no bash shells left, I think, at all. There, cool. That's screen. Uh, screen, and you can always reopen a detached shell with a number. You can figure out what the number of the shell is and reopen that detached shell. You can do it that way if you want. Screen is fantastic because you can, you don't have to, you can basically run things in the background and then log out and it will maintain. It will just run there forever until you log back in and go back into that screen. Giant warning. If you do this, and you leave, or you die, or you are fired, or whatever, and that screen is running, and no sysadmin is really paying attention, that screen is just going to run forever. Yes, I just created a bomb for all the sysadmins that, if you're a troll and you hate your sysadmin, yes, you can do that. You can bomb your sysadmin with processes that just run indefinitely forever. Uh, don't do that, because I've had, the problem is that if you're running a process in screen, uh, and you log out and it continues to run, great, except there's a process running on that system. And if someone else needs to use that system and suddenly finds they can't because they're out of RAM or they're out of, you know, or CPU or, you know, their CPU is completely throttled or whatever, they're going to be annoyed. Don't, <clears throat> and then we have to go find an admin. Um, don't just, and I've seen a lot of people, I've, I, in every single job I've ever had, I've watched... You, you look, I basically snoop around on the command line to figure out who's running what, and I see all sorts of people running all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> I saw a process once that had been running for 93 days straight. <clears throat> uh, the person hadn't been working there in 94 days, or 92 days. They basically started a process in their last day, and then left. <clears throat> and that process, and in screen, and then they left. And because the sysadmin wasn't paying attention, it was just sitting there. Yes, the sysadmin should pay attention, but make sure if you use screen that you keep a note to yourself about which ones you opened, or when you log into systems on which you use screen from time to time, hit PS to look at your processes. That's what PS stands for, or process. Uh, and make sure you're not running anything additional in the background. Cool. Uh, that was screen and running things in the background. The next one we're going to do is on coding, and we're almost done. Thanks, guys.